From Toronto, Canada, welcome to True Stead Bless, brought to you by Christ Exalted Ministries. We want you to be inspired by the Word of God, to be enriched by the Word of God, and to be blessed by the truth it contains. Here is Pastor David with today's message. God bless you as you listen and learn. Well, welcome to today's broadcast. It is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. Here we are. So many people have been longing and desiring to leave 2020 behind. So 2020 is behind, but uh, I'm not sure about the problems, COVID and other things, if they have been left behind. However, we know that it's a new day. It's the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to choose to rejoice in it, to be glad in it, to be thankful in it. You know, we ought to be so, so thankful because God is for us, not against us. He cares about us. He loves us. He thinks about us. And He's thinking about you right now where you are. Let us talk to Him. Let us welcome Him in our midst. Let's pray. Abba Father, in the mighty name Jesus Christ, we welcome you in our midst. And we ask, O oh God, that you administer to us. We ask, O oh God, that you, your spirit would rest upon us. Your anointing would be upon us. We ask that you would give us sight to our eyes and hearing to our ears, light to our understanding, that, Father God, we may see what you're about to show us. We may hear what you tell us. We may receive into our hearts what you are going to give to us today in Jesus' name. And so, Father, as I stand here again, I ask of you, fill my mouth. O oh God, speak to us, your children. We want to hear from you. We do not want to hear from man, O oh God. Father, we desire to hear from you. So speak in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Bless God. Praise God. Amen. Where is your, your reward? You know, the Bible tells us that uh, without faith it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God is a rewarder. He rewards. It's the very, very first thing right now today that I would like for us to settle in our hearts, that God is a rewarder. He rewards. I do not want you to think of good deeds and bad deeds and, and, and how God rewards and what He rewards for. We do not want to focus on that today. Focus on two things. One, God is a rewarder. Two, uh, He rewards. He's a rewarder. He will reward you. Now, as we came into 2021, one word God gave to me, just one, and the word reward. We spoke about this last time. And we remember for 2020, as we came into 2020, the Lord said to us, fatness and fullness, fatness and fullness. And we have experienced that. And I believe that was the beginning of that. It's not ending with 2021 being over, but it continues because God's desire is to bless His children. Amen. And so, so now God says to us rewards. I believe that God wants to reward you. He wants to reward you with good, every good thing. And He wants to reward you abundantly. And this reward has nothing to do with good deeds or bad deeds. It has nothing to do with how good you've been, how many good deeds you've performed, whether it be 2020, 2019, or, or whenever it was, all your life. It has nothing to do with all the good that you have done. It has nothing also with all the bad you have done. It is not about good deeds and bad deeds. That's not what this is about. You know, it, it, it is not uh, like Christmas time. It, it, this is not about Santa Claus. And if you're a good guy or a good girl or a bad boy, a bad girl, and, and so if you've been good, Santa is going to bring you a present. This is not what it's all about. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about God. Amen. We're talking about Almighty God. We're talking about God who loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you. I mean, His heart beats with you in it. 
What an awesome God we serve. It is not about what you can do, what you have done, what you're going to do. It's not about your abilities. It's not about your experiences. It's not about uh, uh, your knowledge and your wisdom or any of that. Do you realize that you cannot do enough good deeds to please God? We just heard it, Hebrews 11:6. but without faith it is impossible to please Him. It doesn't matter how, many, how much good I do, I cannot please God if I don't do those good deeds with faith. Must do them with faith. Now, I said earlier that this has nothing to do with how much good or how much bad you have done. It's not about you doing good or bad. It's about God rewarding you. In a little while, you're going to understand a little bit better. So bear with me. John 15, verse 5, says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without me you can do nothing. I want you to think about that, and I want you to remember that. That God says, Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. It is re important to remember that. Often throughout my life, my adult life, especially my life in ministry, God had to remind me that I'm absolutely nothing without Him. I don't do what I do in my own strength, in my own wisdom or knowledge or know-how, experience. What I do, I do by the Spirit of the living God. It is God. The Bible says, Jesus said, God is the one who does the works through me. It's Him working in and through me. Remember, you can do nothing without Jesus. He said it again. He says, for without me, you can do nothing. But at the same time, I want to encourage you that Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so you can do all things through Christ who strengthens, strengthens you. You can do nothing without Him, but with Him you can do exploits. Exploits. He's your strength. He's your confidence. He is your enabler. He makes you to be able to do. The one who works in you to will and to do for His good pleasure, Philippians 2.13 says, He is your strength. So, so then God's reward, when manifested in your life, knowing, understanding that you can't do anything without Jesus, so that when the manifestation happens, when God's blessing is flowing in your life, when the provision comes in, when things are happening on the right hand, on the left hand, all around you, and you know and you see it, you will remember to give God thanks for it and give Him glory for it and not boast in your own self. Look at what I have done. Look at what I have accomplished. Look how good I've been. Look at what I have by my own hands. It's not by your own hands. It's not in your own strength, but it is by God Almighty. You won't be able to say, I did it my way. You won't be able to say, I did it. But you will be able to say, it was my God. It is my God who is awesome, who is wonderful, who has given me the victory, who takes me and leads me into triumph, causes me to win every time. He's my strength. He is my force. He's my light. He's the one that goes before me and prepare my way. He makes my way smooth and easy. It is Him. It's all Him and not me. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, it says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. 
You have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. You are not saved by your own hands. You are not saved by your own works, by your own strength, your own power. You were saved through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, God, God's grace, His mercy, do not flow to you because of your power and your strength. It flows to you because of Jesus. They all come to you because of Jesus. The Bible says, My God shall supply what? All your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God's blessing flow to you because of Jesus. It's because of Him. Romans 8, 28. It says, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love Him, to those who are called to His purposes. It's God. It's all God. God working in you, through you, working in your life bringing things about and causing things to happen for you. It's God. Now think with me. Why is it then, why is it that you would believe that if you do this good deed or you do that good thing or you, are, or you be so good that God will meet your need? Why is it you think that way? Or I may think that way. Why is it? I cannot, I cannot make anything happen for me unless God does it. You know, I look at my own life. I look at the ministry. I look at our church. I look at our people. And I see how God, have, uh, God has blessed us and how He's blessing us, how He's provided, how He's taken us on forward and, and, and launched us into the deep as it were. Hallelujah. I think it's time to cast the net on the other side, Pastor Ray, I think it's time to cast that net on the other side because God has launched us out into the deep. I remember suddenly, I remember right here now how God said to Jesus, Jesus said to, to Peter, go out and launch out and, and put the net on the other side one more time. Just go out and do it one more time. He's launched us out into the deep, and I'm expecting more souls than ever before. I'm expecting more lives than ever before, more lives transformed, more people healed and delivered and set free than ever before. I'm expecting God to do miracles, wonders, awesome things because He's wonderful and He's awesome. And the thing about it is that He is doing it, and none of us. He gets the glory. He gets the honor. He gets the praise, and it's got to be that way in your life. It has to. It has to. And this is why I say to you by the Spirit of the living God that it is not by your good works and because of your good works. No, it's because God chooses to bless you. He chooses to reward you. It is His desire to, good, to do good on your behalf. You cannot make it happen. You cannot. We can go through the Bible from cover to cover, and we see all those examples of Joseph and David and Moses and Joshua and right through Abraham and, and all of them right into the New Testament to Peter and James and John and Paul, and we recognize one thing. They didn't do it. They did not do it. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God did it. It was God with them. You know, the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus, meaning put the Holy Spirit on Him, that anointed Him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, healing them, delivering them, because God was with Him. In all these men of old, it was because God was with them, because God did it. And God is with you today. He's right there where you are with you. His Spirit is with you. And He chooses to do good on your behalf. His desire is to reward you. 
and not because of you. I keep saying that by the Holy Ghost because I want you to understand it is not your good deeds. And it is not, if you do not receive God's good, it's not because of the bad you've done. Because God, He does not reward you according to you. He rewards you according to Jesus. He rewards you according to what Jesus has done. Think of what I just said. It is not what you have done. You did not save yourself. You did not go to a cross, stretch your hands out, and allow them to crucify you and shed your blood for your own self. Jesus did it. He did it. And because Jesus did it, because Jesus did it, God's grace abounds to you. His mercies are new every morning. His joy floods your soul. His strength is yours. His peace that passes all understanding belong to you because of Jesus, not because of you. I'm sorry to tell you it's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. Truly, I'm not sorry to tell you that. I'm happy to tell you that because it's truth, and we're here to give you truth that bless. Hebrews 10, verse 35 and 36 Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Again, the Bible talks about reward. Do not cast away your confidence. What confidence? Your faith in God, your trust in God, your dependency on God, holding on to His hand, knowing that He will lead you, He will guide you, He will take you through any dark place, He'll bring you out of any deep place. He will take you to the top of the mountain. He will take you into good places. He'll bring you through. It continues, for you, have need, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. God keeps His promises, my brothers, my sisters. God keeps His promises. God is a rewarder. God rewards. He blesses. He keeps His promises. He is not man that He would lie. Please keep that in your mind. Remember, God is not man that He would lie. He doesn't lie. His word is truth. And what God says He'll do, He will do. And God has promised, I believe with all my heart, to reward us. We've come into a time, an era of rewards. If you will believe it, you will see it in your life. Because it's not according to your good deeds. It's according to your faith. <laughs> Didn't Jesus say it so often, church? Didn't Jesus say it to so many people? Be it unto you according to your faith. Receive your sight according to your faith. According to your faith, let it be to you. According to your faith, according to your faith, according to how you believe. You will see the manifestation of God's rewards in your life because of your faith, because you believe you believe, you believe. Hold on to His hands. Hold on to that confidence you have in Him. Do not let it go. I want to take you to Isaiah 40, and if you would turn your Bible there, uh, it would help. Isaiah 40, we're going to read from verse 1 through 5, and then verse 10 and 11. Isaiah 40, verse 1 through 5. And it begins this way, God speaking to the prophet and saying these words to him, Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Says your God, speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Past tense, she has received from the Lord's hand Double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Where did we hear that before? About John the Baptist? They asked him who he was. He said he's a voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. 
And look at this now, verse 10 and verse 11. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His rewards, His reward is with Him. Let me read that again. Behold, His reward is with Him. The question I asked in the beginning of this message is this. Where is your reward? Here it is. His reward is with Him. God's reward for you is with God. It's with God and will manifest in your life when you believe for it. And I believe you believe. And it continues, and his work before him, verse 11, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young, demonstrating God's care, demonstrating that fatherly love and care as a shepherd who shepherds the flock and feeds the flock and, 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 and give drink to the flock, caring. And God says, through Isaiah, his reward is with him. I want to take you also to Isaiah 62 and verse 11 and 12. It says basically the same thing. Isaiah 62, verse 11 and 12. It says this, Indeed, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world, Say to the daughter of Zion, Surely your salvation is coming. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. I want to also remind you that this, all of this is talking about Jesus. John the Baptist going before and proclaiming and making a way for the Lord as we were. And then the Lord came, went to that cross and died for you and for me and for the world at large. Just like the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God Send Jesus to give you life, to give me life. He came to give us life, not death, not darkness, not damnation. That's not God's desire for you or for me. His desire for you is life. John 10.10, 10, again, Jesus said, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I come to give you life in abundance. Remember again, God is a rewarder. It says in verse 12, and they shall call them the holy people. And they shall call them, remember, Isaiah is prophesying about 750 years before Jesus was born. And he says here, and they shall call, futuristic, they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. That's you and that's me. Every person in this world, whether it be Jew, Gentile, Greek, black, white, yellow, it does not matter. Any person who received Christ as Lord and Savior, received, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, the city not forsaken. Settle again in your heart, in your spirit, that God is a rewarder, that He rewards you, that He rewards you not because of what you have done, not because of what you can do, not because of what you are going to do, but He rewards you according to what Jesus has done. Listen, that's good news. Because if God was to reward you according to what you have done, hmm, or what I have done, we would have very little. <laughs> We would have very little or none at all. I thank God today that His rewards. See, God chooses to bless you. God has made the choice that He's going to bless you because of what Jesus has done. Let me, let me share something with you. The Bible tells us that God, that, that you and I, we are hid in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, that we have been raised up and we are caused to be seated in Christ Jesus next to Father God in heaven. And so if you are in Christ Jesus, if you are inside of Him, and, and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and you are in Jesus, every time you call upon the Lord, He has to look into Jesus to find you. <laughs> every time you call upon the Lord, He has to look into Jesus to find you. He doesn't look down here on the earth. 
If you are hidden in Christ, if you are seated at the right hand of the Father, where do you think He's going to look for you? Go ahead and look it up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Read from verse 1 right down to 6. You're seated in Christ Jesus. And that's where God finds you when He wants to look for you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He looks at you. He has to look through Jesus. And if he's looking at Jesus, what does he see? Holiness, purity, goodness. He's seeing the blood of Jesus. He's seeing the, he, he sees what Jesus has done for you and for me. And that is why he's able to forgive you and to forgive me. He's able to bless you and to bless me, to reward you and to reward me. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. He that comes to God must come knowing this. Let's, let's read Hebrews 11 again to you, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, He is God, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We must come to Him with faith in our heart that He will reward. Have you received Christ as Lord and Savior? If you haven't, would you? Pray this prayer. Father God, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Please forgive me my sins. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Fill me with your spirit that I'm born again. I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I declare that the blood of Jesus Christ has power over me. Say this, I renounce Satan and his works. Father, baptize me with your Holy Spirit and give me his gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. I invite you to write to us and to tell us that you have received Jesus. And I encourage you to find a, a God-fearing, Bible-teaching church and fellowship there. I want to pray a blessing upon you. Remember, God is a rewarder. He rewards you. Father, in Jesus' name, let your rewards be theirs. Let your rewards flow to your people. Let them experience your blessing. Let them know that blessing. Let them believe you for it. I bless them in their going out, coming in, sitting down, rising, sleeping, and waking. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Until next time, God bless you.